Hello and welcome to another edition of Attractwell Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Attractwell, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. We're really glad you're here today. So excited to have you here today because we are going to be talking about how you can build automation and smart systems into how you serve clients in one-on-one -on -one coaching packages. So if you are someone who offers your one-on-one -on -one time in a series, uh, such as a series of coaching calls, uh, maybe a package that includes calls with you as well as other things, we're going to talk about how we can build in uh, smart systems so that we can leverage how you spend your most valuable asset, your time, with your clients. So uh, head over into the chat. Let us know where you're coming in from, what you do. We're always excited to learn more about the folks in our community and meet you here on these live calls. We're here every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And uh, we always have something new to share and talk about, whether that is introducing uh, ideas like what we're talking about today, building in smart systems to help you uh, really with the, with the very time consuming one on one work, um, all the way through to imagining different ways to present offers, uh, setting up beautiful websites, even if you're not a designer, lots of great stuff. So definitely uh, make sure that you are signed up, that you tune in. And of course, uh, we have opportunities every week to work together live. So if there's something that you would like some personalized context around, then we have uh, opportunities to do that on this call as well. So go ahead and head into the chat. Don't be shy. Again, we're always so excited to see you here. Uh, Greg and I are going to be popping out a video so that we can get into some slides that I have prepared for you today. Uh, and then, of course, we will be doing a fair amount of show and tell inside of the Attract Well system. So let's go ahead and get into it. Just make sure I've got everything pulled up so I can see if you guys ask me questions. All right. So today, as promised, we are talking about systems and workflows. Uh, we're going to be using automations to support coaching call series. So if you offer packages again, or if your program offers a series of calls, we're going to talk about how we can really in a snapshot view, take a look at, uh, at where someone is at in their progress with you, what package they're on, et cetera, and talk about how we can um, really shrink the time uh, and the effort that's required of you to get those things executed. So today we'll talk about what it looks like to offer a one-on-one -on -one call series in Attractwell. We have systems and workflows that we'll get into. I actually have a visual representation of a system uh, that will apply, I think, to the majority of cases. But obviously, we have the opportunity uh, to get into greater personalized context on our call here today with our live help and Q&A. So if you would like to join us for the opportunity to be live on a call like this, to get your questions answered and to have that one-on-one -on -one context made available to you, you can go to attractwell.com slash office hours. That's if you're watching us right now on YouTube as a replay or you're seeing the streaming in our Facebook group, we'd love for you to come and join us in person here on Zoom. And if you would like to set aside dedicated space on a call like this one, you can go to attractwell.com slash work review and reserve space on an upcoming call where we can work on anything you'd like. And if you need a hand, if you'd like some of this done for you, you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge and learn about our team and how they can help you get things done. Now, let me know in the chat. Don't be shy. Do you offer packages of calls? Do you have offers that include a series of calls where someone may be on call three of eight with you or something to that effect? Yes. All right. What does that look like? Let me know in the chat. Do you have, uh, do you sell up front uh, a, a set of 10 calls? Do you have a program that includes four calls? And how far apart? do you set those calls? So Susie sells packages of 12. Awesome. So would that maybe be an annual? A weekly, you meet weekly for 12 weeks. Oh, fantastic. Option, three options, free paid. One-on-one -on -one in group up to 12 calls every two weeks. Fantastic. Okay. So the examples we are going to be uh, following today are flexible based on your um, your preference, right? So if you want to be meeting weekly, you want to be meeting bi-weekly, you want to meet monthly, whatever that looks like, do keep that in mind as we go through some of our examples here today. Um, and what I'm sharing uh, with you here as an option, uh, Mary will work for you, I think as well, um, if you are kind of at their pace, but we can talk about some um, 
some distinctions you can make there if you are working in that capacity. So regardless of what you're offering in terms of volume of calls or how many weeks you wait in between, days you wait in between, what we ultimately need is a system that allows us to see where someone is in the process of completing their call series with us and that streamlines how we share information with them. And then finally, that automates as much of this process as possible, right? The getting the information out and reminding them to book, the reminding them of when the call date and time is, all of that kind of stuff. We wanna get that off of our plate and into automation so that if we are going to be spending our most valuable asset or one-on-one -on -one time in our business, that we are creating as much as possible to support taking us away from spending that time otherwise, so that the only time that we are showing up is the most profitable and most impactful, right? For our one-on-one -on -one time that can't be shared with anything or anyone else. So the first thing that we wanna do in creating anything in attract well is we want to map out the journey what do we want the client to experience what is the end to end flow that we want to build and then we're going to dig into the features that we'll use in attract well and talk through the best way to get this set up to serve your business and what you offer so for a call package if you have a series of calls our client journey is roughly going to look like this your client is going to pay for a package of calls. This is a one-time purchase. Now, there are other ways that you can offer, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one calls with you. If you have a membership, if you've got a multi-part, multi-payment, whatever, that's something that you would execute in a vault. What we're doing here today is showing the most straightforward, simple way to get this done. Um, and it's all, honestly, if you're going to offer packages, this is what I recommend. You can include vaults when someone buys something, maybe if you have course curriculum or something like that, but you still want to use what we are going through today to make sure that you are executing the entirety of the system. Okay. So the client is going to pay for a package of calls. Now an email after they, pa they pay is going to go out automatically to them with a link to an intake form. Everyone here uses some kind of an intake form before their first call with a new client on a package, right? We're figuring out where they are. We're getting their agreements on certain things, right? Um, we're gathering information, right? Okay. So we send this out automatically. This is going to go to a page that has an intake form on it. Now the client fills this out. And when they do and they submit the form, they are now tagged with new client 12 call package, right? And whatever the name of your package is, I would use the, the tag for with the name of, of the package and new client. So now you know that that is somebody who is a new client on that package. Now, after they have filled that out, they are redirected to another page and allowed to select a time for their first call with you. Now you meet. After the call, you add notes to their contact card and attract well, and you send a follow-up email and you apply an automation. Now, the automation is going to do some important heavy lifting here, and it allows you to not have to think about this stuff, the administrative details, on an ongoing basis. You just know that you need to add notes, which you already do anyway. You need to send a follow-up email. You already need to do that anyway. But then we're just going to add this one step. We're going to apply an automation. Now that automation is going to modify the contact tag and it's going to apply a campaign that sends a link to the next booking page, the next intake form, et cetera, in the series. Now this process is going to repeat, right? You have your call, you meet, you add notes, you send a follow-up email, you add an automation. It's going to adjust the tag. It's going to send a new campaign that sends them to the next thing in the series and so on through the end of the series. Now here is what it looks like if we were to draw this out visually. How many of you are visual learners? <laughs> I hope that this is helpful to you. So when someone purchases your call package, obviously they're going to be on a page first that sells the package. So they're buying a 12 
package or 12 call package, right? Now, after they enter their name and email and all of the other information that you would want to include on the page where you're selling them something, you are going to send them just a quick one message email that sets expectations, um, you know, that tells them what's coming up, shares some information, whatever, and then it sends them to this initial intake form. Again, this is where we, we get our agreements. This is where we figure out where they are right now, their initial goals, et cetera, right? So we want them to go through this page first. So we're gonna send it to them via the campaign just in case they can't do it right away if they are, of course, in this case, redirected to that page right after purchase. We have a sort of fail safe here to make sure that this process is completed. Now, of course, after they have completed their initial intake form, they can then book their first call with you. And that initial intake form is going to, or you could even do this on the sales page. At, on one of these pages, you're going to want to make sure that you're tagging them with new client and the name of your offer, right? The name of your package that you're selling. Okay, so that is the package process. So up until this point, it's everything that we need to have call number one in our 12 call package, okay? So we have the call. They've booked themselves and we've had the call. Now, after the call, we're going to add notes to our contact. We're going to send them a follow-up email regarding anything that we covered on the call. And then we're going to apply the next automation. So the example that I've provided here is that we have automation one, is going to tag them with call one of this package complete and remove that new client tag. It's then going to remove that welcome call package campaign from that first step. And it's going to send them a new campaign that's going to give them their intake for the next call that will then send them to their booking page. Now this automation, we will repeat. This, um, the second system that I'm showing you here is one that we repeat through completion. We have an automation for each call in the series. So this, uh, this example that I've provided here is that we have a three call series, right? Because after they've purchased, they have filled out the form and they've booked, that's call one, right? So the next automation we apply after call one is one where we might use a tag that says call one complete. Or in, in your case, if let's say you have a 12 week program, then you would have uh, for your tag over here, instead of new client over here on the left, you would tag them with week one, right? And then your next automation would be week two, et cetera. You can obviously make this your own, but we're going to have an automation for each of the calls that we will have throughout the series. And you may choose as well to create a saved reply for each. Again, it just depends, right? If your calls are more or less the same and you're focusing on more or less the same metrics, then you can use or, or rather reuse the same intake page, for instance. And of course, the same booking page in all cases, you can reuse that as well. So, you know, if, if you are meeting with a client and every week you are talking about just these, uh, these five things, and you're going to be asking them those same five questions every time that you get together, then just use one intake page, right? And then from each of these campaigns, you can send them that intake page. If you are talking about something different with each call, maybe you need a different set of data or information from your client prior to that call about maybe what they've been doing, what they want to talk about, et cetera, then you are going to want to consider making a different intake page for each phase of this process. All right, is that making sense so far, Susie? I see that it's making sense to you. Um, you guys, let, let me know if you have any questions. Now, I wanna go in depth here on the features that we're using and how we are using them, what's included on them, et cetera. So the sales page, pretty straightforward, right? It sells the call series, it takes payment, and it could, in this case as well, go ahead and tag the contact. Okay. So we can tag the contact with um, new client and then the name of your package, right? 
Now, the initial intake form is what we want to send them to next, right? So you could use this instead of a confirmation page, send them straight to this page after they complete the form on that first page. Um, and then, of course, regardless of whether you do that or not, you want to make sure that you are sending that intake form as well via confirmation campaign. And again, the intake form that you use can be used for the entire series or just for your intake and your first call. You do have the option to create a new um, page that you can use a different form, you know, ask different questions on for each of the calls in your series. Now the booking page is the most straightforward thing of all of this. It is just a page in your AttractWell site with your calendar event embedded. Doesn't really matter which calendar service you use. If you're looking for a free one, Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, they have a free level. You're only able to create one booking event, but if the length of time for that booking event uh, does a pretty good job of capturing what's needed for all of your calls, so say 30 minutes, 45 minutes, then you could simply use that, um, that booking event and embed that onto a page and attract well, it works beautifully. Now a campaign, campaign that you're using um, for for the subsequent um, the subsequent things that uh, the messages that we're creating and that, that are being applied for the additional automations that we're using, we're going to create one for the second and all subsequent calls. Because remember that that initial campaign that we're be, that we're sending is confirming that they purchased and sending the intake for the first call, right? So we create a campaign for second and all subsequent calls. And we want to delay the first message, OK? Now, the reason why I'm explaining it this way is that a lot of us do, do require some amount of intake be completed by a client prior to our next call with them. So if you are, in fact, meeting with a client on a weekly basis, right? then you might go about this slightly differently, right? You may choose to use a, um, you may choose to broadcast this or, or you know, send this as a saved reply, uh, as, a, as a manual email, as opposed to using a campaign. It's kind of up to you and we can certainly talk through this. But essentially what we wanna do, let's just say for instance, you have a six month uh, package of calls where you're going to be meeting once a month, okay? What you would do in this case is for each call, so let's just say we had our call one, here's our call two, we're creating our campaign. I'm going to delay this campaign to day 14, like the first message to day 14 or day 21 or something to that effect so that I can send them later on in the month a reminder to fill out this form, let me know what you've been doing, and then head over here and book our next call or call for next week or something to that effect, right? So you can actually use a campaign in this instance because it can send a message to them automatically, which is great. And if you are sending this, again, on the day that you are having the call, right? You're having the call with your client at, at three o'clock today. You're going to have that call at three o'clock. It lasts for an hour. So at four o'clock, you're putting in notes. You are adding this automation, right? And this automation is going to 21 days from now, send that message that says, hey, go ahead and fill out this form or three days from now, right? If you're doing this weekly, then maybe you want to schedule this out uh, so that they are receiving this, you know, in a shorter period of time from the date of the call. Because th this is going to be applied the day you have call one you'll be applying this um, this automation so that they are then able to um, fill out the form and book call two. Now, again, you can use a unique intake form. Uh, you could use the same one for each call. Um, and then of course, in any case, you're gonna redirect to the booking page from any of those. And then you're gonna create an automation that's gonna be set up for second and all subsequent calls in the series. And that's going to modify their tag. So if we started off with the tag uh, new client with the name of the package, we're removing that tag and we're saying call one completed. 
The next automation that you use is going to remove the call one completed tag and add the call two completed tag because you just completed call two, right? It's also, again, going to remove the previous campaign just to keep things clean and then add the new campaign. And of course, if you need to, want to, you can use a saved reply for one or each of those subsequent calls uh, to streamline those post-call follow-up emails. And that, again, is really just going to be a debriefing on what you talked about and anything that you know that is standardized that you would be sharing on call one, call two, call three, et cetera, in your series. This is really just a time saver. Now, how do we build this? Our order of operations is as follows. Create your booking page first. We're gonna do this by creating a calendar event in your favorite calendar software. Uh, the location of that call is going to be a recurring Zoom meeting in your AttractWell account. And you'll set that up to share that with the client after they have selected their, um, their date and time and they've booked. So we're gonna embed that, just make a simple page in AttractWell to create a booking page if you don't have one already. Then we're going to create an initial intake confirmation campaign and add a booking that booking page link that we just talked about to the day zero message. Now, essentially, this message is going to say you've purchased my 12 call coaching series. I am so excited to work with you. Go to this link now to book your first call, right? Or something to that effect. Now, if you are going to be using a... Um, an intake form here, then skip this step for now and, and create the intake form. And then you'll actually be linking to the intake form uh, from this campaign. Now that page for the initial uh, intake form, this is where we're going to, um, I'm sorry, not the intake form. I'm sorry, did, did I do this wrong here? Forgive me. Okay, so you have a sales page, right? Which I assume you probably already have if you are actually selling currently your call series. That's where you're actually going to connect uh, this campaign here. And the intake form is where you're going to send them from the campaign. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. This actually is a little bit out of step from the picture that I showed you guys. So with this intake form, the initial one, you wanna make sure that you're tagging the client accordingly in the lead section of that page. This is where you're going to call them uh, the tag new client plus package name. Uh, Mark, um, how do we create the intake form? Uh, that's actually a page in AttractWell. You're gonna use the leads form to create a form there. Um, Carol, if some are in person and some are online, they can still be sent the information. Absolutely. You're still going to be sending them the information to their email. They'll still be purchasing from your website, uh, but you may choose in your um, in your calendar booking software to provide an additional option, right? So maybe um, they're booking an in-person as opposed to a Zoom call. You could absolutely do that as well. You would just want to make sure that your calendar software is set up accordingly. All right. So we create the page for that intake form. We're going to tag them with this page. Uh, and then we're going to create any subsequent intake forms, right? And, and this is um, one that we will use for all of them or one we'll use for each call. And we'll send them to the booking page after they have completed the intake form. Then you'll want to create a campaign for each call in your series. Now, the message of this campaign is going to be basically the same in every single one of them. And it's going to say, we're in week two, or it's time to book our second call, or something to that effect. You may want to share additional information as it pertains to what you're focusing on with the client in this stage of your offer, or you just keep it simple and say, hey, it's time to book your call. Head over here to, to fill out the form, catch me up on what you've been doing and then you can book your time with me. That's essentially what you're saying. And you're going to do that for each one of the calls in your call package, okay? Be it for, uh, starting at two and beyond. So when you're setting this campaign up, we just talked about what we're going to say. We're going to make sure that when we create the message, it's automatically going to be, it's going to show up as day zero, but we don't want that. We want this message, this first one to be delayed according to your package design. So if you are meeting on a weekly basis and you do want to get intake information from your person uh, before the next time you get together, then you might want to delay two days, three days or something like that, right? So send it on day three. If you are meeting 
like I mentioned before, once a month. So you're going to be meeting next month. Delay this 21 days, three weeks, so that they can schedule for the following week so that you're keeping that monthly flow. If you're meeting every, you know, every two weeks, you, you get where I'm going with this, right? Delay that first message so that they have a sufficient amount of time to fill out and schedule their next call with you. And then finally, we create an automation for each of those calls in our series. And what that looks like is uh, we remove the previous tag. So if we're creating our automation for our second call, then we are going to remove the new client name of offer tag. And we're going to add the tag call one completed with the offer name, right? Or we could say week two or however you want to set up that designation. We're using the automation to adjust the tag here. Then we'll remove the previous campaign and add the next one because we've just created those. And then finally, again, if we need to, we'll create a safe reply for each week or for each call or however you're doing that, um, or you just create one. And again, this is really just a way for you to streamline how you send a recap uh, and any other appropriate information that you would send uh, to a client after you've just had a call with them. All right, so let's go talk about how this works in AttractWell and get into live help and Q&A. Um, SNR, I see a question here. Can I create my own intake form with fillable PDF and use it in AttractWell? You can. It's not my recommendation, however. Um, and the reason is this. If you're using a PDF intake form, you do have a file um, that, that that person has submitted to you. So that's awesome. And if it is your preference for something like an agreement that you have something that's truly printable in that way, you could do that. I'm, I'm certainly not arguing against it. But in this particular case, my recommendation is actually to use a page on your Attract12 site so that someone can fill this information out. And once they do, you are able to see everything in their contact card. So it actually streamlines how you collect information. So let me see if I have a one of these that I can actually show you as an example here. Okay, yeah, so here we go. This would be like a strategy call landing page. In this particular case, we would have a series of questions that we would have somebody answer. And you do have the option here to, to create multiple choice, um, you know, scale of one to 10, radio buttons, check marks, et cetera. You can really go nuts with this. Um, so unless what your intake is, like unless your intake is something that is by necessity really complicated. So I'm thinking like, you know, if you have like a multi-symptom questionnaire, or something like that, if you're in like the, the health field, uh, then, then that gets a little bit more complex, a little bit more challenging. And there may be other ways that you wanna go about sending it. It may be that you're sending that form via the campaign, right? Uh, and then, um, and so essentially what you would be doing is, yes, if you do have a PDF in that case that's fillable, you're going to, in the campaign, uh, instruct them to print it out, fill it out, and then email it back to you. But what you do is um, if you were to fill out something like this, and actually here, I'll, I'll just go use this as an example right now. Uh, and I'll show you exactly like how it looks in Attract Well. So um, here. Okay, so I filled this out. Obviously yours can be much more extensive than this. There's really not a limit to the questions, the number of questions that you can ask, uh, which is great. And you could also make this appear on page if you want to, um, so that you're not dealing with a pop-up. And if you do have a, you know, a rather long intake form, then I would recommend that you embed this on the page as opposed to um, a pop-up. So when I say, let's get started, um, in this case, we're sending me to a book a call. So this is actually set up very similarly. So this should, uh, and again, this is just a dummy, a test account. Um, this should be a calendar embed right here where you can then book your call. But let me show you this reason why I, why I wanted to show you this in Attract Well. So if I go back to my dashboard here, you can actually see uh, that this person just visited the website. So that's me. 
And here it is. The note is here. And you can see this is the question that was asked. And then here is the answer, right? And so this automatically uploads. So it is a bit more streamlined. It is a little neater. So if, for instance, somebody uh, was providing a multi-page PDF uh, back to you, they would have to email to that, that to you directly. And then you would need to go and maybe add it down here to their file section, which again is totally fine. Uh, but, um, you know, if you, if you can avoid it, it's going to be more streamlined for you because then you can go into here and find all notes. Here we go. And, and you can actually go and, and find, uh, here we go. We'll filter for notes. Yeah. So here you can see all of the things that have been filled out when they've been filled out. Uh, and so if this is, for instance, if the name of that page, like yours maybe should be, is, um, call one or week one or something like that, you would be able to go here and quickly find it and then find their answers. So um, yeah, so that is the um, the intake. Uh, you would create multiple copies of that if you are going to be talking about, um, you know, different things on your different calls. There's another one that I missed up here as well. Carol says, if I'm doing a health consultation and after the initial consultation, a report of findings, then they sign up for three or six month package, which gives them different things, recipe book, accountability tracker, mealtime guide, articles, tips, et cetera, geared for them. Would that be in a vault they would go into after each visit? Each client information would be unique, little confused. So we have done some more in-depth trainings, Carol, on, um, on providing that more, um, tailored custom experience, typically, and I think this is going to be especially true where the breadth of information that you might be sharing with a client um, can vary pretty widely despite it being the same package. So I think like, you know, if you're doing health consults, especially if you're in the functional space or really anything that would require a fair amount of education and on a range of different variables and topics for your client, um, the Cliff's notes here is that you would want to create, um, you, you would basically want to have a one-on-one -on -one client dashboard. And so if we go to the, the Success Academy here and we type in under our live training and replays, uh, client dashboard, you can actually find the training that I am referencing, which is this one, this top one right here. So definitely check that one out. That's going to give you some, um, I think some pretty solid recommendations for how you create that. Um, I wanted to make sure that today um, that we were able to really cover the bases for folks who maybe aren't doing something quite as complex as that. What we're talking about today will obviously work for you no matter how complex your offer might be. But if you are somebody who especially is just getting started and you're just doing calls, I'm just selling my time right now, this is the simplest system. If you are offering a, a multi-part series that also includes, um, you know, the contents of a vault or even the customization of uh, how someone accesses features inside of a private client dashboard in a vault, you can use this system. You would just be adding the vault to the purchase. Um, and then you wouldn't necessarily need to use the intake form. For instance, if it's a private client vault, then you can actually share files uh, so that that um, multi-page PDF intake form could be homework inside of a, a, an online class uh, lesson in a vault. Uh, and then they can upload the file right there so you don't have to upload it to your system. So there are multiple ways to, to achieve that. But in terms of being able to keep up with where your clients are in a series, this is going to be the baseline and everything else is just an awesome addition on top of that. Okay, let me see if there are any other questions that I have missed. Okay, I could still find my PDF in the file section if I add it, it just wouldn't show up under past notes. That's correct. Yeah, so if, if your preference is to stick with a PDF, email that to them, or like I was just mentioning for Carol, putting that into like the homework in an online class lesson inside of a vault. It's a little bit of a next level thing that you could do. Um, in any case, you, you can still use the PDF. It's just, if you're not using a vault, it is going to require just a little bit more work of you. Susie says, I like using the form page as a session note template. I set it up for me to fill in while on a call with my client. This creates a note automatically for the call. Um, 
I feel like we've talked about this before, but can I repeat that it's genius, Susie? Like that is such a smart use of our system. <laughs> so um, I would actually be curious, Susie, if you would, if you wouldn't mind sharing, um, what what would that look like for you? Like what fields are you creating? Obviously, you're putting in their name and their email, right? Uh, but but what what kind of prompts are you giving yourself? Because I think this is a really interesting use case that would be worth, oh, the action steps. Okay. So basically, like you're making a note for, I told them they need to do this. And then it's just going into your system automatically. That's so smart. All right. Mark has a question about, um, oh, and then what to follow up with them for next call. I love it. Uh, okay. Question about coaching agreements. Yeah. So we actually had a training on that as well. So if we go over here to agreements, I'm pretty sure we did a dedicated training on this. Yep. Managing contact, uh, client contracts and agreements. So there are a number of different um, ways that you can actually set that up in here as well. Again, if if what you're doing is um, is something that is very simple, where they're basically checking, I agree, then that's something that you can just do on a page. And it's awesome. It's um, it's very similar to something that we did. Uh, I actually showed as a tip last week. Here, I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. If you want your intake form to morph itself magically into a um, an agreement, then what you're going to do is in your form, you're going to have a multiple choice, yes or no um, question, and it's going to be required. So if I go to, what was this called? I think it was strategy was the name. Yep. Okay, so if we go into the settings for this page and then into the lead settings, we can say, um, I'm gonna show it and I'm gonna require it. This is where we're going to, you know, put in, I agree that, and then you paste whatever it is that you want to say here. And then we're going to use a list pick one. We're going to edit it. And we're going to say, I agree. And we're going to say done because they're not going to fill this out if they don't agree. Right. So this is really just checking the box. I agree. And so what that looks like when we leave here and we check out the form is they click, I agree. And then they move forward, right? So that is really the, the simplest way that you can establish something like that. If you do have something that's more complex legally, right? You need to get a lot more fine print in there, et cetera. Then obviously there are other ways that we discuss on um, on that other training. Okay. Let's also go take a look as well at, um, and keep it coming with the questions. If you guys have them, you guys, or if there's something in particular, uh, that you want to see, uh, what I want to actually go and show you right now though, is how we would set up, um, like the ongoing process, right? So like the automation that we would use. So let's just say that that strategy call template is, um, that's going to be, that's our initial uh, booking page, right? Or that's our initial intake. So let me just go back and find that again one more time. I'm going to make a copy of it. You're going to want to do this too. So copy, and this is going to be call to intake. And I'm going to then modify that to whatever questions that I need to ask for call number two, okay? And remembering that, here we go, if we go back here to call to intake, we can find that page. There it is. We'll go in and make any modifications that we want to make. Obviously, we don't need to take our um, agreement over to call two because what that's all we needed for call one. You can change these things around. It is still going to send them uh, over to the, um, the booking page that we're using, which is great. So this is done. Good to go here. So our call to intake is done. Now we need to create our uh, campaign. And this is, let's just say that we're going to be meeting with our client uh, once a month. 
or once every four weeks, right? So we'll create a campaign. I'm gonna prefer email for this. And that just means that in case the email doesn't send for whatever reason, it can send to, the, to text. So this will be um, call to uh, invite to book. And then I would also maybe use the name of program. Whatever the name of your package or program is here. So we'll create the campaign. We'll write our message. And we'll say it's time to book our next call. So we'll say, hi, I'm looking forward to catching up on your progress. Head over here now to um, fill me in on the latest details with you. From there, you can book our call for next week. All right, so head over here now. I'm gonna copy this text because I'm gonna use it again here in a second. I'm going to command K, I'm gonna add a link. And here I'm going to go find, here we go, there's our call to intake page. And I'm gonna paste that text back in right here. Okay, and so that's it. Our signature is going to automatically apply if we have that set up in our contact settings. And then we just need to delay the sending of this message. So I want this to send three weeks after our call. So I'm gonna send that on day 21. All right, last thing. Now let's go create our automation for this. So that's gonna be under settings. We'll go to automations and we're gonna create a new one. And this is gonna be our uh, call to name of package, right? Whatever the program or package is. So call to six weeks with Jane, right? Whatever that is. Um, and here we're going to add our action. The first is going to be with tags. We're going to remove that new, new client tag, new client name of package. We're gonna remove that tag. See where it says remove. And then we're gonna say, add tag, call one complete name of package. Cause we are going to be applying this after that call is complete, right? So add. Now I'm going to remove our initial campaign. So maybe this is our welcome. We're gonna remove this one, hit remove. This is the one that would have sent out when they purchased. And then we're going to add that campaign that we just created. There we go. And this one, we're going to add this one. So add. And that's it. So we're gonna create that automation. So now if I go back to my contact who has filled out their form for call number one, which is this one right here, we have our call, we add our notes, right? So we go down here to notes from our call, we go call here and this is, we had the call today, right? Perfect date and time. And here's what we talked about right? Anything that you would be saying on a call like this, you go ahead and you add that past action because that's what you do. Maybe we want to use a saved reply, save ourselves some time, or we can just shoot a message off. Great talking to you. Here's what we talked about. Uh, look for a, an email from me in a few weeks to book the next call, right? There you go. And then finally, you would go here and you would run an automation. And so this would be call to, name a package, run the automation. And now you can actually see, once this is done, you can actually see call one complete name of package. You can see where they are in the process. So that automation that we created along with its campaign, we're going to make a copy of that for call three, call four, call five, et cetera. And so that way, each time you're going in and you are filling this out um, and you're doing the things that you would normally do after a call with a client one-on-one, -on -one, 
you just do one thing and it changes up everything to where it needs to be. So it reflects what's current and you can carry on. And it is um, obviously a bit of work up front, but if this is a sort of keystone thing that you offer on an ongoing basis, this is obviously going to save you boatloads of time in the future. Now, if you wanna use that hack that um, our friend Susie here was talking about, um, maybe you create a page for yourself to use for your notes, and then on that page, you can attach an automation to that client. And now you're saving yourself an additional step. You don't have to remember to add the automation. If you are using your own form that you created for call one for that client, just make sure that you're using the correct email address. <laughs> just make sure it's the correct contact information. Um, but yeah, you could actually attach the automation to that page where you're adding your own notes because that's stuff that the client's never going to see. All of that's just stuff that's happening on the back end, and that's a delayed uh, a delayed send on that email. So it's not going to go out right away, immediately anyway. Okay, Mary has a question here. I've set up a number of individual client vaults, and I'm struggling a bit to manage them and work with them. For example, if you've added discussion questions to the vault as a way of interacting after each mini lesson in a class for coaching clients to do between classes, what is the easiest way to reply and interact with your individual clients in their own private vaults? Could you maybe overview how to do how to best do this? Another I'd, I'd like is the ability to open up the class like the client would see and show it to potential clients so that they could see what they would get. Um, mm. So I think that what we, I, I know this is something that we talked about in the training about private client um, vaults. Um, and that's the, the one where you create the one-on-one -on -one private client dashboard is what we talked about uh, as the title of that. Um, one of the options that we discussed there was that you had sort of like a master list of all of the lessons that you could possibly teach to a client. You're probably not going to go over all of them because they're kind of tailored to what that client needs. Um, and so you, you put all of those into one online class. Okay. And you are able to wherever you put that online class, if it's in 17 vaults or it's in one vault, in each of those vaults, you're able to choose which lessons are actually displayed, which show, um, so that people are actually able to use them, to, to move through them, to enable. You, know, you, you can choose whether they're enabled or not, basically. So you also have the ability, and you can do this in a fairly leveraged way in terms of modification, um, you can also enable or disable discussion on those. So if you are already going to be meeting with the client and you'd rather just have those questions be something that you cover on a call, you can just disable um, those comments. But, um, but if you are wanting to interact in between, I would just make sure that whatever lessons that you want to have enabled are in fact enabled and have discussion enabled on those lessons. I hope that this helps and I'd be happy to bring you out to chat if that doesn't um, quite answer the question. Um, and in terms of showing somebody what they could get, um, what I would recommend is one of two things, um, either a, a recording of you actually kind of screen sharing and going through and demonstrating what's there, or you could actually have a demo vault. So obviously, if you're going to be doing one-on-one -on -one client dashboards, you're going to want to have the unlimited vaults and online classes add on and get in a, a track 12, right? So use one of those as a demo vault where you'll just have a bunch of stuff set up. Maybe you have somebody else join it and put in some fake questions and answers. That way you're protecting client privacy. And then you can actually show that maybe on a private call or you could, you know, allow access for 24 hours or however you wanted to make that, that available. But I would create a copy of it, right? So create a separate version so that there's no potentially um, compromising, you know, client information shared um, because you, those are, you know, built in your case to be private client dashboards. Okay, what else, what else? Um, my clients book their calls with me ahead of time. Would I not just send the booking link? Can I just send them an intake each week? Yeah, Susie. So in your case, and especially because your calls are so close together, um, what I would do is um, just as part of the intake is to um, is to have them book 
all of those calls to just go ahead and, and set those up. And then I would just create a campaign um, that, you know, sends out, you know, every X number of days, hey, make sure you fill this out before our next call. So if you are indeed meeting with them truly, like on average, you know, seven eight, six, something in that number of days, then, and, and, and you're keeping that schedule, then you could use a campaign. Um, if things don't necessarily work that way and you are more flexible with your bookings, then I would remove the whole automated campaign piece from it entirely and just have a saved reply with that intake form and just schedule it. If you know when the calls are, just spend a few minutes and just schedule those to go out on a weekly basis to that client so they've got that reminder. And just forego the campaign piece because, you know, in the event that they, you know, something happened on week three and they need to, you know, it's a medical thing or whatever, and you're giving them some grace. And so you're going for 13 weeks instead of 12, they're just skipping week four, then, you know, a campaign's not going to allow you flexibility there. But if you're scheduling those emails to go out ahead of time, then you can obviously go back and make those changes. Okay. I have a company building my website because I'm not a tech person. Can the company building my website discuss how to set up my automations with a track tool so they can set them up for me in advance? It seems complicated for a new user. I'm not sure what the website builders need to. Absolutely. Yes, please. Yes. Just uh, get in touch with us. Um, happy to help with that. Um, we could even, you know, there's, there's an opportunity there for someone from our concierge team to interface directly for the build out project. There's, and honestly, a lot of the stuff we're talking about today is a little bit advanced um, with like, you know, the levels of automations and everything, if you're brand new to this, but, um, but yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a way to make a track well work, just as you would use a website from any other place you could have a website. So if they have questions, they're more than welcome to reach out to our support team on your behalf. And of course, if you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one, hands-on help to support your website folks, then our team is able to help with that as well. Okay, yeah, so a dummy vault will work for you, Mary. That's awesome. Um, you do have the ability in the setup for a vault um, using automations and, and other features in, uh, in AttractWell to, um, to remove them after X number of days, for instance, if, if you wanted to do something like that. And Greg, of course, I didn't see that you like just you wrote a great long response there. <laughs> um, Okay. All right. Megan made an element update for a mobile view and now the mobile view is extremely off. Do you want to look at it together? Let me know. Um, we can, we can kind of screen share and look at that together if you want. Okay. Awesome. Let me grab these questions real quick. Can I create a shareable workflow similar to sharing a template so I can make this available to my clients who also use track well? Jillian, that's a really great question. And, uh, I'll show you one up from there. Uh, yes, you can. Um, you can create a shareable workflow, but you're going a step further. You're actually sharing an entire system. So if you have a funnel, which is its own system, right, where you have a page where somebody uh, enters their information or they pay, you know, whatever the, the purpose of that page is, the follow-up messaging that goes out, um, the pages that they're sent to, any automations, conditional response stuff, you know, campaigns that come from other automations, entire systems, can, as they built, are built in your system, be bundled into what's called a resource bundle in AttractWell. And then when your client who uses AttractWell claims that bundle, it imports into their system exactly as you have it set up in yours. So there is going to be some amount of explanation that you may want to provide if this is a DIY situation um, where maybe they need to make some modifications to what you've created. Right. So you may want to provide some instructions where that's concerned. I think checklists are great for this. Just do this, then this, then this. Um, but in terms of the actual flow of how it works, um, it's going to be set up and export exactly how you use it, which is pretty cool. And of course, um, we would be thrilled uh, to help you, um, you know, learn the best ways to communicate that as well. Obviously, you being somebody who would be recommending attract well to your clients, uh, we'd, we'd be thrilled to, to work with you. Uh, to that end and make sure you've got that um, set up and running well. 
Dale says, I have a question that's a bit of a departure from today's focus, I'm feeling like I need a more, more defined guidance to getting things off the ground. I wonder if there might be a checklist type of chronology getting started. And I know there's a place where it's already set up, but I guess I would like to go step by step in creating a coaching business uh, and doing the flare items after the back end stuff is set up. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so Dale, step one, create a way to get paid and make it as simple as possible. If you're selling your time, create a page in attract well that collects payment okay and say clearly whatever the thing is that you're selling on that page and then after they they pay you can put that um put a campaign underneath uh, and you can actually just click to go create a new campaign and just have it say hey i'm so excited to work with you hit reply and let me know a time that works best for our first call right or you could send them to a booking page so you basically want to have a thing that you sell. Like if you want a business, you have to sell something. So create the thing that makes the money first. Then you make sure that you have the things that serve the people that paid you money, right? So um, the things that we talked about today, making sure that's all streamlined, that's gonna be an important thing to consider, right? If you if you feel like you really need to make sure that you need those tools to be on top of, okay, I'm, which where am I at in this process? You can just use the notes on a contact card to do this. And that's totally fine. Um, that's that's where I would start. Um, do that, come back next week and let's work on the next thing. <laughs> Create the thing that you wanna sell first uh, and have a way to take payment uh, because everything else is, is fairly logical from there but you gotta create um, the point at which the transaction takes place first. Okay, I'm going to find you uh, and bring you out, Megan, and we'll go take a look at your page. Hey, let me know you can hear awesome. me. Yes. Okay, um, what page are we looking for in your account? The home page. Um, okay. Yeah, just a home. Okay, give me just a second. We'll get into your account. Okay. Okay, what are we looking for? What section are we? The that first section, the mobile view, I don't know why it only has those two sections. I can see it scrolling in the background, but it doesn't show the whole page. Okay. Okay. So this is desktop only. This is mobile and tablet only. Oh, okay. So Okay, Sometimes yeah, that this... comes to mind. Can you check to see if it's a sticky section? Like go to the one that's on top, hit the pencil icon. I've seen that mm -hmm. before where if you like accidentally click it to make it stick to the top, then all the other website is scrolling under it. Um, yep, it's uh, sticking to top and bottom. Out. Yeah. Oh. Section with a sticker. Yeah. Got sometimes it. okay. sometimes it's really great to have something that just stays up top with somebody um, as they're scrolling through the rest of the page. But um, unless it's something that just needs to be, and usually it's going to be like a little call out bar that's like, get my free thing or whatever that just stays as they scroll down the page. That would be a good use case for okay. that. But um, but yeah, for, for your normal website. Almost section. like a sale banner on the top. Is that what yeah. that is? Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like a okay. call out banner. Oh, look at that. That actually looks just fine. Look at that. Okay. Ah, so much. Okay, so that was the stickiness that was messed up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, was that it? <laughs> I took it. Yes, that was it. I um from the last call, I think it was like two weeks ago, you had suggested I do that, and I love the look of it. And then when I realized what had happened, my friend was like, hey, I can't see the rest of your website no more. I was like, wait a minute. I'll get on the call. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Awesome. Well, Greg with the eagle eye here, I would not have known to look for that right away. So awesome. I'm glad that was it. Thank you. <laughs> and good work. It looks great. All right. Oh, that's so cool. I'm, I'm glad that was so easy. Um, 
that was an awesome visual. What's it called? Are we talking about? So on um, Megan's page here, this is um, this is like how we modify whether something's viewable on mobile versus uh, desktop or um, tablet view. And, uh, and, and yeah, so you have, I, I hope this is what you meant, Sharon, maybe let me know if it's not, but basically you have the ability to, to sort of modify how something looks and see it ahead of time using this viewer here. So you can see that she's over here, right? But then we're underneath here and it's, it's not necessarily always going to translate really nicely between a mobile view and a wide full screen view. So you do have the ability to do that. But what Greg was talking about and what he was able to find so quickly was this sort of stick to top or stick to bottom, uh, which is definitely a cool thing uh, to use if we wanted to, let's just say for instance, um, and I'll remove this right away, I promise, Megan. Um, oops. Oh, yeah. So no, that wasn't a pop up. Actually, that was just a, a sort of a, a demonstration of what the website looks like uh, on a mobile device. So um, that stickiness that we were talking about, and this is just such a cool thing to use. Um, I definitely recommend using a contrasting color. So I'll go and grab like this one here. And then, you know, this is where we'll say, you know, get my free thing. And this will be a button that will maybe go to a pop-up on the page or it'll go somewhere else. Regardless, you can put that in, put lead there if it's, you know, for the form, hashtag lead, or you link it somewhere. And then I can give this a button. And I'm going to modify the size of this because it's just way too big. So that's going to be maybe 30 something. All right. So obviously it's not beautifully designed, but I want to make sure that this section is, um, is sticky to the top. And so what happens is, is if we are scrolling, you can see it as the very first thing you see, but then everything else scrolls underneath it which is pretty cool, right? And this is also something that you could put further down on a page. So maybe you, you're you offering something, but maybe you want them to get past the hero section first. Then once they get to that point, if we're scrolling down, we obviously see here, there's our free thing, but it stays there once we keep scrolling. So that is the sticky feature, um, uh, which has great use, but just you know make sure that you're only using it um, where you want something to truly stick to the top or the bottom of a page. All right, so let me get over here and delete this. Get out of here, save our changes, make sure we didn't mess anything up on your site. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, I'm glad that we could uh, to show and tell and share this with you guys. I hope you feel a little bit more clear about how you can really kind of take um, how you serve your one-on-one -on -one clients to a more leveraged level. And of course, if there are use cases that you are interested in exploring that are a little different for your business, let us know. We are happy to sit with you on a call like this one and work with you toward getting those things figured out. I hope you guys will come back and join us next week. We'll be back here same time. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week, everybody.